Okay. It was it? 11.17 a.m. Good morning from Reykjavik. We've just checked out of our hotel and we're having quite the dilemma. We're trying to set up um, initially with Android Auto for the car and then Keith's cable didn't work for his phone for some reason and then worked on my phone. But the issue is when I was renewing our SIM card things from the ones we got in England, I accidentally did it on Keith's account. So now he has double the credits. So I have no credit, like internet or anything. So we've just been hotspotting for the time being. Because we're like, it's only a month, I'll be fine. But the issue is now I don't have data, but only my phone connects to the car. And so we're trying to sw switch the SIM cards. But we don't have anything to switch the SIM cards out with. So we're going to pull out the, um, the staple in the itinerary and see if that works. Because the pins are, out. the pins were too fat, like the little pin bits. They don't work. So I'll update you in a sec. We may have got it. We're using the, um, the keyring thing from the car keys. Yay! <laughs> so I got me a handy dandy map. And our first stop is Seljalands Foss. It's a waterfall. And there's a few nearby as well that we might check out. But look at this, we're like a minute out of our hotel. Look at that view. Look at Keith. Such a good job driving on the wrong side of the road. Selfos, I think it was called. We just drove in, uh, driven over some like incredibly rocky and volcanic looking terrain and it was awesome. And now we're in this cool little place where it's a lot greener. There's this cool little stream thingy going on here. This is like the outskirts of Selfos or something. We're about to go to a supermarket to get some supplies for the road. We've got our lunch. Veggie with avocado hummus. Seems okay. It's vegan. The supermarket was fun. Mm -hmm. And we're still in... What's the place called? Selfos. Selfos. We're still in Selfos. And the sun's come out for a little bit. Which is really nice. We actually see some sun. There's some cool seabirds flying over there. Meant to be a good time to see birds apparently right now. Yeah, because I come back in April. We're going to try to see puffins. We're at Salyajan Foss. Some sort of big waterfall that you can walk behind. And we're just about to go over there and have a look behind it. This looks incredibly dangerous to walk along. Slippery wet rocks to get behind the waterfall. So we got absolutely sprayed with water trying to get in here. I am soaked after that. You definitely need a jacket because we're downwind from the water just falling. <sighs> soaked and I'm cold now. So this is behind the waterfall, kind of more of a side on view. back in the car safe from the rain Whew. got wet really quickly all of a sudden but that was really cool that waterfall was just like we got a little friend we picked up <laughs> I thought you had it <laughs> we picked up this little puffin his name is Percy Percy the puffin he's the road trip mascot mm -hmm. how's he gonna go on here Back, maybe. We got him hung up. Say hello to the road trip. The mascot. First thing for a second. I had to think for a second what that was. 
Let's go, Percy. Let's hit the road. So just down the road from Skellagelands Foss waterfall is Skogga Foss. I'm learning that Foss means waterfall. And this is Skogga Foss waterfall. Apparently the water comes from a glacier in the western part of Iceland. And it's a big river, it's like the Skoga River or something that has the water running from it. So the legend is that this guy, whose name I can't pronounce, hid a chest behind the waterfall where it would be hard to get. And then one day these three guys tried to take it and they hooked an iron ring. They somehow managed to hook an iron ring around one of the sides of the chest. Because one side of the chest always was visible. And they pulled and pulled and pulled and eventually the the ring snapped and all they ended up with the, was the ring and now it hangs on the church door in the town yeah that's the legend i don't know what happened with the chest though now there's a viewing platform up there 527 steps to the viewing platform we've got to go up there in this really annoying drizzling rain <sighs> that was a heck of a climb but we made it to the top of the waterfall. This is the river at the top. It's about flowing down to the waterfall. Unbelievable. It's clearing up so much out here. You can finally see the a part of the hill at least. Iceland fun fact. When the country was settled in the 9th century, it was 30% covered with forest, but now it's only 1% forest because the settlers who came here basically deforested the whole place. And because of that, they can't grow any new trees because of the um, sheep and the cattle that they brought over is completely like eroded the land and they struggle to grow trees like the native trees don't grow anymore but they're trying to regrow some trees but they have to bring in foreign trees and try to like gene mutate them to get a tree that will actually grow here that's why it's so windy here as well because there's no trees we're at some place called and it's only like a puffin viewing spot or something in between to see other seabirds but we've come really far up a hill and that's sort of all we see right now so we might not get to see any puffins up here except for Percy yeah we see Percy but we'll see if we can see any of his friends okay. where are my friends I can't see my friends so these are the birds we're meant to be able to see up here Puffins. but this is all we see. Fog. Just fog. It's meant to be a beach so you can see them from, so we're gonna go back down and see if we can see anything down there. I feel like we're literally at the edge of the world because we're looking off a cliff into fog. It's kind of scary. There's a bird down there. Let's see if we can see anything. Okay, we just drove down the hill. Oh, we're just up. There's like a car park and toilets and stuff here, it's a lot clearer, there's like paths you can walk on. So we're going to explore real quick. Boys is in like half an hour though, so we're going to be fast. What? It costs money to pee. Oh, oh what a shame. We've been really lucky with all the public toilets so far. So this is Rainestrara Beach, the black sand beach. And it's really black. So oh, cool. Apparently the puffins are meant to be around here. But I don't like their chances of seeing any. We didn't see any puffins up on those cliffs over there. So we've come down to this beach called Raisinfaran Beach or something. So hopefully we see some puffins down here. Do you think the odds are seeing of puffins, Percy? I think you have good odds. I can feel it in my puffin bones. Out there. What happened to his funny voice? He changed. Good little man. I've seen a lot of things. <laughs> I'm starting to become a man on this road trip. I started as a young baby puffin, but now I'm a man. Look at how black this sand is. Actually, I think I should. I should adjust the white balance because this looks grey. Yeah, that looks more correct. The different exposure. That's about how dark the sand is. 
it's literally black sand it's awesome this is the cool black sand beach here haven't seen any puffin jet though I'll go for a walk down there it looks spectacular <laughs> So either we're blind or there's no puffins out there or they haven't arrived yet. So we're going to look into it when we get a bit more internet about where we can actually see some puffins and if they're here yet. Um, but right now I think we're just going to go try to find our accommodation and some food. There was a restaurant here but it's closed and there's a restaurant at our accommodation but it'll be closed by the time we get there. So we're going to have to just take anything we can get. Sorry Percy, there's no puffins out there. But I want to see my family. Sorry, Percy. That's right, this place called Stroden? Stroden? Something like that. Anyway, it's in a town called Vic. It didn't pop up on the map. And it's the only place that seemed to be open. And we're kind of lucky it was open, maybe. And we got burgers. <laughs> seemed like the cheapest option. They look pretty good. They're playing on the menu. This place looks really cool. It could be new. Maybe that's why it doesn't pop up. Good burger? Looks good. The menu looks pretty good actually, I thought. So that place, the two burgers, cost us 5,700 Icelandic krona, which is about $67. Wow! So it's expensive! Uh -huh. Welcome to Iceland! This is the little guest house we're staying at. It's a room and then out there there's a bathroom which is shared with another room. So that's gonna be fun. But at least we have a sink so that's good. This is the Hankubaka guest house. Oh no. And the sun doesn't set. Oh. Lucky I want an eye mask at the airport. Oh no. <laughs> What's the point of these curtains if we don't have curtains right up there? Anyway, that's our that's the end of our second day here in Iceland. I almost said Reykjavik. But Iceland. We hope you enjoyed it. Hoping for some better weather in the next couple of days, but the forecast doesn't look great, so what can you do? But anyways, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.